Welcome back. This week we'll be talking about exactly what makes your sea perch work. Science. Science. And of course, engineering. That's right. Engineering is the acquiring and applying technical, mathematical, and scientific knowledge whoa, to whoa, 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 whoa. Basically, what Amanda is saying is that engineers are problem solvers. And some of the science that engineers use is the same science that you'll be using for your sea perch. Let's start with Newton's laws. Isaac Newton was a 17th century scientist. And he made all kinds of discoveries. You know, the guy with the apple. An apple fell on his head and Newton discovered gravity. Right. And Newton's first law of motion is the law of inertia. Inertia is the resistance of an object to a change in its state of motion. That's a mouthful. In plain language, Newton's first law means that an object at rest tends to stay at rest, and an object in motion tends to stay in motion, going the same speed and direction unless acted upon by an unbalanced force. It might be easier just to show them. For example, this car. If there are no forces acting upon it, it won't move. It is at rest, and it will stay there. But if I push it and become a force, the car will roll. But I thought it was supposed to move at the same speed in the same direction. Well, it was, but there are other forces acting upon it. In this case, friction. But there are lots of other forces out there. There's frictional force, magnetic force, gravitational force, applied force, basically any push or pull on an object. So why did it slow down? Well, when I pushed it, I became an unbalanced force. Once I let go, the frictional force picked up on the object and moved in the opposite direction. For instance, a boat or even a sea perch can move through the water because of the force pushing forward, the force caused by the spinning of the propeller, is greater than the force working against it, resistance or friction caused when it is moving through the water. So it will continue to move as long as the force from the propeller is equal to the friction of the water. Right. Another one of Newton's laws is the law of reciprocal action. This means that for every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. Forces always come in pairs. For example, when your sea perch moves through the water, the spinning of the propeller is exerting a force on the water. It is actually the equal and opposite reaction force that makes the sea perch move. So then, if I try to lean on you, you are actually providing me with the reaction force to keep me from falling. And in balance, because you are at rest. But don't forget Newton's first law. Unbalanced forces. So if everything is balanced, there is no change. But when forces become unbalanced, there is a change, either by putting an object at rest into motion or by changing the speed and direction of an already moving object. And speaking of balance, there is a special and important point in, on, or around an object that helps engineers to calculate the reaction force of an object. I know, it's the center of mass. Correct, or the center of gravity. But it is the point on an object where the mass is centered or concentrated. It's very important to figure out how to move an object when subjected by an unbalanced force and to figure out reaction forces. Everything has a center of gravity. Like a ruler. If you have a ruler of uniform material, then the six inch mark is the center of gravity because that's the midway. Both sides are balanced. But it's not always that simple. You can't just split an object in half because some objects are made of different materials and have different weights. Like the spoon. You can't just measure the weight in the middle because both sides aren't balanced. But there is a part of the spoon where it is balanced, and that's the center of gravity. You'll see later why this is so important for sea perch. Engineers consider all of this when they're working on a design. The engineers at MIT have pre-designed your sea perch kit for you, but it's important to know how it works just in case you need to fix any problems or make any modifications of your ROV. For instance, you can make changes to your sea perch as long as you do not exceed $20. The one thing you can't change is your motors. But, let's say for example you decide to change the angle or location of your thrusters. You can do so, but be sure to consider all the effects the changes will make on your sea perch. Now we've got something else for you to consider. We have two experiments to help you better understand how friction and force work. Ready to see force in action? Sure. Now start blowing. That's enough. Now let go. But I just blew it up. Oh, I get it. So the air coming from the balloon is the force that pushes the balloon. Exactly. Okay, all right. Um, I got one for you, out in the hall. Here, have a seat. Now push off the wall. Oh, okay. The chair moved from the wall because the wall pushed back with the same force as I did. Now how about we have a little contest to see who can get the wall to push them back the farthest? Well, that wouldn't necessarily be fair, considering you're stronger, you'll go further. 
Maybe not. Because I'm also heavier than you, I'll accelerate slower, and there'll be more friction acting against me, which will cause me to slow down faster. Well, that's friction for you. You see forces like friction in action every day. And speaking of action, you're probably a little anxious to get started on building that sea perch. Let's hand things over to Chris, our sea perch instructor as well as a naval architect. Each time we meet, he'll show you a part of the construction of the sea perch. And we'll be back soon with more information about the science behind your sea perch. Have, Have fun, fun building! building.